Good morning. <clears throat> I think I can hear that okay. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Hey, you. Yeah. Bop, 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 bop. You're the first one in here. So you got to help. You got to make sure you got to let me know that you can hear this okay. I'm just kidding. I actually have systems that show me that I can hear everything okay. <laughs> and that you can too. But I appreciate you volunteering to help anyway. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? See, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to seven, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Tuesday. That's right. Today is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. It's Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most. I mean, the absolute most of this absolutely incredible day. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's make the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Do me a favor. Check in right out the gate. I want you to drop either a smiley face, an exhilarated face, a hilarious face, a caring face, whatever it is. Hit one of those emotions right down there so I can get a pulse. I want to get a pulse for how everybody's feeling this morning on hashtag rise and grind. That feeds me some energy. It tells me where you're at. It helps direct traffic on today's episode of hashtag rise and grind. And grind. I'm so glad you're with me. There it is. Now I'm seeing the hearts. I'm seeing the happy faces. I'm seeing the likes. I'm seeing all of those things. Make sure you check in. I truly, truly appreciate it. Listen, I am your host. Welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I'm your host, Glenn Lundy. I am also the creator of the Hashtag Rise and Grind group. I got the wrong one up there. I'm also the creator of the Hashtag Rise and Grind group group right here on Facebook. If you haven't done so already, I would love for you to come join our group, 30,400 members and climbing. It's an incredible group filled with motivation, education, and inspiration. It is a safe place where you're not going to have to deal with any of the other stuff that's typically out there on social media. It's also a group of people that come together to lift each other up, to rise together, to do amazing things. I was shocked when I see that little invite button, there's a little invite button when you're on the group. Uh, I was in the group uh, yesterday and I hit that little invite button because I've kind of assumed that just everybody in my feed is in the group. And I was shocked, man. There's 1,500 people. 1,500 people that are my friends on Facebook that are not in the Rise and Grind group. Can you believe that? And so you can only invite 100 a day. So I invited 100 of them yesterday. I'm going to invite 100 more. I would highly, highly suggest and love it if you would do the same. Just go to the group, hit that invite button. It's right there. You can see it right there. There's an invite button. Just hit that invite button, invite your friends. But if you're watching the show, not a part of the group, we'd love for you to join us. There's always room for one more. Speaking of the group, one of our family members is hurting right now. One of our family members, Miss Whitney Wells, uh, her and her family are dealing with a lot. Uh, a couple days ago, today's Tuesday, so I believe it was on Sunday, uh, Whitney found out that her sister, her young 41-year-old sister, uh, Brittany, uh, passed away. She, she passed away 
Sunday morning, I believe it was Sunday morning, unexpectedly, uh, she has, uh, I believe, four children. She has some grandchildren. And so Whitney's been been struggling with that, obviously, as we all would. And so I was hoping this morning you would take some time, maybe shoot up a prayer uh, for Whitney and her family. If you're in the area, here's some information about the services. They will be having the uh, services here uh, coming up, yeah, it looks like the 17th. So three days ago is when she passed away. They'll be having services on the 23rd. So if you are in the area and you can go support Brittany, would greatly appreciate that. Also, her family is struggling a bit as far as the unexpected expense of the funeral. Uh, having to bury your child is never anything good. Having the expense on top of that, definitely not a fun thing. So I'd like you for, for you to pray on that as well. If you could just send out your prayers for Whitney. She's one of our amazing family members here in Rising Grind. She's been part of us for a very long time. Um, so shoot your prayers up for her. I would greatly appreciate it. Also speaking on the group, I saw some things yesterday that I absolutely love. I saw Heather and Camille, Carmilla were together yesterday. Um, they met up in hashtag rise and grind elite. They met in the elite group. Um, both of them single moms. And so they met up yesterday and they grabbed their kids, which I love this picture of Heather's son and Carmilla's daughter. And they took their kids and they went to the ark. We have a big replica of Noah's ark here in Kentucky. They met up and went and did that, which is also something uh, that's amazing. I see it all the time in our rise and grind group. It's what makes it really special is we take rise and grind offline it's not just an online group it's an offline group as well i also saw shauna corsale and bill mcclain they were hanging out together uh, both elite members as well and that's super cool so i just love seeing that stuff so join the group man it's all about connections invite other people to the group it's just an amazing place to be. With that said, we started a new series here on hashtag Rise and Grind. We started a new series called Monsters, and there's no S on that monster for some reason, but we started a new series called Monsters, and we're learning, it's the lessons that we've learned from folklore, right? From from stories. Uh, for example, yesterday we learned a bit from Dracula. Right, We learned a lot about Dracula, the history of Dracula, and we also learned how evil acts, doing evil acts, like our man Drac, the original Dracula, doing evil acts can actually cause us to lose our identity or, or give us the inability to look ourselves in the mirror, which is ultimately where this whole concept of a vampire can't see himself in the mirror. It's because of the, the evil acts, right? He doesn't want to see himself. He's ashamed of himself. And so we talked about that uh, yesterday, some other lessons that we could learn through and from Dracula. And so today we have more monsters that we're going to learn some lessons from. Uh, but before we do, you know what we got to do. We got to do some dancing here on this show. That's right. It's a morning show, man. It's early. It's 5.30 a.m. And so people are just kind of getting going. A lot of people are just kind of getting going. We got people out there running right now. We got people out there that are exercising, trying to get that body moving. And so we got to throw some dance music on. We got to dance a little bit. That's how we come together in the mornings. I know we're crazy, but that's what makes it awesome. What other show got people dancing? I mean, there's there's going to be thousands of people across the country dancing first thing in the morning, right? So this is also the part of the show where I want you to say good morning to me, and I'm going to say good morning to you. Drop it right there in the comments. Also, hit those emoticons. I love that energy. So drop it down in the comments. Let me know that you're here. You say good morning to me. I'll say good morning to you. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, say what's up. I'll say what's up too. All right. Good morning, Kim Fair. What's up, Mike Romano? How you doing, Melvin Rodriguez and Robin Wilshons? What's up, Cindy? I owe you a call this morning. What's up, James Gavin, Terry LaPierre, Pam Woosley? What's up, Heather? We were just talking about you. What's up, Rich Panicelli? We got Julio Soto, Janelle Griego, Melinda Gayheimer, Eddie Brown, Vicky Ever, Brad Smith, Jeremy Noli, Nathaniel Banks, Colleen Van Houston. What's up, John Colton Bourne? We've got Michael Yazdick up in the house this morning. What's up, Michael? How you doing? Kevin Stroh Snyder, great to see you, sir. Scott Simons, boom! 
What's up, brother? Hey, you know what? Amanda Sanner is up in here this morning. Love that. I love seeing you with Corey Darkus from the Elite. You guys chatting the other day. What's up, Dana Fishbean? We've got Ray Hatchers up in here. Uh, I believe I have Spencer Nicholson. I think I saw Liza. I'm not sure. If you're in here, Liza, good morning. Great to see you. You normally are. What's up, Kim Wilson? How you doing, Jeff Baker and Terry Lapierre? Listen, if you're listening to this on the podcast, that's right. If you're listening on the podcast, drop a review. Let me know you were there. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. I appreciate that. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, drop a comment. I'll see you over there, too. Or if you're watching at 5.30 a.m. Pacific time, make sure you say what's up so I can see you and I can say what's up back. Super important. What's up, John Paul Guidry? What's up, Robin Wilshons? Also, hit that share button, dude. Are you kidding me? Like, do it right now. Come on. Today's going to be a great show. All kinds of energy. What better way to start the day? Hit the share button. Let's get everybody up in here on hashtag Rise and Grind. Great to see you, Krista Bug. There's Liza. <laughs> Ready for an incredible day. I see the hearts. I see the happies. I see the likes. I see all of that. We've got an incredible episode for you today of hashtag Rise and Grind. Let's go ahead and dive in right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's do it. Why am I standing in front of one of Augusta's most haunted places? That's a great question. This week we are talking about myths, scary tales, and yes, monsters. It just so happens I know a real life zombie. Not really. His name's Moses Mosley, and he's actually one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He played Michonne's pet in one of TV's biggest TV shows in history, The Walking Dead. I connected with him and asked him, why is it as a culture that we are so drawn to scary stories and monsters? I think it's like the mythology behind, you know, zombies and things. Cause you know, all, everything comes from something, you know, this wasn't just something that was thought up by somebody. There's like lore on this that goes back centuries and centuries, you know, back when humanity first started and people are just now, you know, reading about it and turning this, this stuff into, you know, movies and TV shows. And um, I think that that's what also um, makes people so interested in it, and the, the, the thought that this could have actually been real, you know, and the, as well as the fact that like as humans, for some we reason, we love being scared. We love that adrenaline rush. We love seeing things we don't understand, but seeing things that scare us and get us to feel alive and, you know, really pumped and all that stuff. So I think the mythology behind it and the fact that we love being scared and uh, feeling alive, that's what, you know, makes us love zombies and all those horror movies and stuff. Yeah. And you know, while I had him on the call, I had to ask him about his morning routine. Do zombies have morning routines? Would a zombie wake up at 5.30 in the morning? My morning routine has been the same for like the past three years. I get up, I meditate. Well, I thank the most high, I thank God for, you know, waking up and I meditate on, I do two different meditations. I do one in the morning where I'm just clearing my mind and just feeling that Zen, that Zen peace where I'm, I'm going, I go to that place where I don't want anything. I'm just, I'm just happy with being, you know? And then in the afternoon, I do another meditation where I'm meditating on something that I want to have happen in my life. And I take myself there and I also work out. I work out at least six days out of the week. And um, that's typically my, my two main things. I do meditation and working out, mind and body training. And um, I, w I wake up actually, I wake up uh, regularly at around 5 a.m. every morning. It's like something that my body got used to doing, you know, from filming and from um, when I used to play football, like waking up early and working out. Now my mind naturally just gets up early unless I'm really tired, then I'll, then I'll sleep in. But on average, I wake up around 5 a.m. every morning and that's my ritual. I wake up, work out, wake up, work out, then I just go do my day, then I meditate again, then it's the same thing over and over again. 
Now it's your turn, hashtag rise and grind. What is your favorite scary story? Do you believe in monsters? One of my favorite scary stories was one of the first movies that my dad ever took me to. This was back in 1985. It was the first PG-13 movie that I can remember. It was a movie called Little Shop of Horrors. And in this movie, Little Shop of Horrors, it's a story of a plant. A story of a plant that miraculously, weirdly showed up at this store. This store that was underperforming. They weren't attracting any business. They weren't attracting any buyers. And the plant shows up and they put it in the window. And all of a sudden they start to attract buyers. And it leads to a bunch of success and a bunch of sales in this flower shop. And ultimately there's this story of fame and fortune and all of the negative things that of course come along with it. It became a cult classic, doing $34 million ultimately in 1985, which was a ton of money, a ton of money for the movie. And they didn't spend a whole lot of money making the movie. But Rick Moranis was the lead. He played a gentleman named Seymour and Ellen Green played a woman named Audrey. Now, when I found out I was going to this movie, I got really excited. I was super excited. At the same time, I was really, really like nervous. And then throughout the movie, I was ultimately terrified because I'm 13 years old, for goodness sake. I don't know what my dad was thinking, taking me to this movie at 13 years old. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my kids today. I had nightmares for weeks, right? But ultimately, I had no idea that this would be a movie that I would remember for a lifetime. I remember the feelings. I remember the experience. I remember everything about it. You know, it's one of those movies that every single time I see it, when it comes on TV or something like that, every time I see that it's on, I have to watch it, right? Do you have anything like that? Do you have any movies like that? You're like, I just, I have to watch it. It doesn't matter if the movie started 30 minutes ago. It doesn't matter if it started 57 minutes ago. If it's got eight minutes left in the movie, I just got to watch it. It's just one of those movies intrinsically. It's in me, Right? Now, this movie's been made into Broadway musicals and all kinds of other things uh, along those lines. And ultimately, it's got a multitude of lessons in it. There are a multitude of lessons in this book. From, from Audrey being in a bad relationship, she was in a bad relationship with Steve uh, Martin. Steve Martin was an angry messed up dentist who was on his own drugs and loved inflicting pain on other people and was very abusive to Audrey. And so there was relationships or there was, there was, there was uh, lessons about bad relationships and what that looked like and why we need to get out of those. There was also lessons about a greedy store owner a greedy store owner that didn't care. He he even found out that the plant well, was was a bad, evil plant. And, and he found those things out and he still didn't care. He just wanted the greed and the fame and the dollars. It was all about the mighty dollar for the greedy store owner. Now, there was another lesson in this movie where ultimately Audrey's boyfriend, who was bad, and the greedy store owner both got theirs. Yeah. yeah, that's right. 13 years old watching that stuff. How about that for great parenting? <laughs> right? So there was lessons. They both got theirs. Karma got both of them. They paid dearly for their actions. There was also lessons because Audrey too, the plant itself was ultimately a glutton without any morals that ultimately preyed on the weak. It was a plant from outer space that was determined, absolutely determined to take over the world no matter what was at stake. But what's really interesting about the movie is though the store owner was a monster and the dentist was a monster and the plant itself was a monster, the real monster of the entire movie hid in plain sight. You see, the real monster 
with Seymour. You see, in this movie, Seymour chops up the body of the dentist. He feeds this plant his own blood directly from his fingertips. He hides the death of the store owner. And the entire time, he is coveting the girlfriend of another man. But because they were all depicted as evil, they justified Seymour and all of his actions. Do you do that? Do you justify behavior that you know is not serving yourself or others because at least it's better than what somebody else is doing? Or it's not ba as bad as you've seen other people do? I mean, I'm serious this morning. Do you, do you limit maybe some of your expectations that you have for yourself based on the environment that you're in? Do you shrink your greatness? Do you justify average or moderate behavior because it's not as bad as some of the people around you? Maybe, maybe, maybe you tend to gossip. Maybe you tend to gossip a lot about other people around and, and, and things like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe you kind of bully, right? You like, you like to, you like to perk up and you like to kind of bully the people around you. You're the alpha. So you can kind of pick on them. You think that's okay. Or maybe you, you judge other people based on their belief or what, what, what they, you think it's stupid. You think it's stupid, so you judge other people on what they think and how they feel based on their experiences, right? Maybe you're sitting there playing this comparison game. You're playing a comparison game, constantly going, well, I've got it better than them. Maybe. Hopefully not, and maybe I'm not talking to you directly this morning, but I want to I wanna ask that question again. Do you justify behavior you know is not serving yourself or others because at least it's better than or not as bad as some of the people that you see around you? You see, as humans, we're ultimately predisposed to this, to play that comparison game and to judge ourselves based on the experiences of others, to judge whether or not we're winning based on the environment that we're in and ultimately playing this more than less than game is a dangerous, slippery slope. You see, my friend, you were designed and built for greatness. You were designed and built for excellence at the highest level. You were hand selected by the God of the universe to be an amazing parent, to be an amazing son or daughter, to be an amazing friend. You were designed for a world of abundance and bigness. You were designed to explore and become ultimately the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. You mustn't shrink that down. You can't shrink down your bigness. I want you to stay true to your higher calling. You see, it's in your DNA. You not only have the ability to create but you have the responsibility to impact. The same year as Little Shop of Horrors, 1985, there was also a movie called Teen Wolf. This movie Teen Wolf came out depicting a werewolf. And it was a classic story of puberty, really. <laughs> If you think about it, a young boy all of a sudden filled with all kinds of hormones and testosterone. He's got like hair everywhere all of a sudden and he doesn't know what to do with it. He's like running around like a dog in heat, right? <laughs> Ultimately, that's what the story is. 
And this story of werewolves has been told over and over in many, many different ways. Originally, the first werewolf started in 60 AD. And the original werewolf was designed to depict a king. There was a king named, there was a king named King Lycaon. And he was ultimately a monster inside. He was the king of the land and he presented himself in a very polished way by day. And he coveted the heart of the God of Jupiter's daughter. And as he coveted the heart of the God of Jupiter's daughter, the God of Jupiter ultimately realized that he was a hard and angry man on the inside, only polished on the outside. And so after a series of events, the king tried to bribe King Jupiter or tried to bribe the God of Jupiter by feeding him human flesh disguised as a gourmet meal. And when the God of Jupiter found out, he turned the king into a werewolf so he could show the monster that was inside on the outside. So that he could show his daughter who loved the king, that he could show his daughter that really he was an animal, that he was a beast, king by day, monster at night. Reckless and impulsive with no consistency or no plan. What's interesting is I see a lot of humans that live that way. I know humans that are polished and perfect all day, but they're lazy and lethargic at night. They're careless with the way that they treat the ones that they love or the ones that love them, the ones that they ultimately share time, space, and relationships with. I personally was one of them. I personally was one of them. And it wasn't until I started to understand a little bit later in life that not only do we have the ability to create and to make an impact, but we have the responsibility. You see, it's a responsibility for greatness that I was able to, to carry my persona of me into the real me, the person that I wanted to be, I had to transform and ultimately become. Now, don't get me wrong. We all have a dark side and I get it. And the dark side actually has use. There's a use for it in competition and competitive sports and going out there and getting it and entrepreneurship. And I totally get it, man. There's a, there's a, there's a place for the dark side where we can dig in and become relentless, the beast inside that seeks and chases excellence. But see, here's the thing is collateral damage is not allowed. That's the difference. The ones that we love deserve the best of us. They deserve to see us rise every single day with intention and purpose. They deserve to see us evolving into the absolute best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be so that ultimately we can make an impact in their lives and on this planet. The best part is we no longer have to do this alone. This is something that we can do together. Technology has allowed us to bring together, to learn from history, to learn from the greats, to, to example and model and grow. And we get to do it together. Listen, my friend, you have to understand you are a child of God, the God of the universe, the God that made everything. And that God made you for greatness. That God made you to be big. That God gave you so many gifts and abilities for one reason and one reason only. And so that's you can make an impact, a positive impact in other people's lives. That's it. That's it. So let's learn from these lessons. Let's not compare ourselves to those around us. Let's not compare ourselves to average and to moderation. Instead, let's expect from ourselves greatness and excellence. Let's work hard. Let's charge towards it every single day. Because the decisions you make, my friend, every single one of those decisions you make, they matter. They matter. It makes an impact on your friends, your family members, your coworkers. You showing up here today has made an impact on me. And I, for one, absolutely love you for it.
If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you. I do. That's why sometimes I just want to wring your neck and go, let's go. Let's go. The world needs what you have to offer. <laughs> Got a little hype there. <laughs> Listen, have an amazing day today, all right? If you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. That's right, go to glennlundy.com. If you haven't done so already, hit the share button, tag a friend, do one of those things, all right? Let's continue to work. Let's continue to work towards becoming the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. I'm right here if you need me. I love you. Have an incredible day. Come back again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do this all over again on hashtag rise and grind. See ya.